Like many of you, I cannot seem to escape the grip of Skyrim. I always find a new reason to start up a brand new playthrough, and today I'm here to justify another one. Because Bethesda sometimes makes it easier. Sometimes you get the new re-releases, your special edition, your anniversary edition, VR, Switch version. You go, hmm, what's Skyrim like on these devices? What's Skyrim like in this year? Okay, I might as well dip my toe in the pool, and it may not be a full playthrough, but you get some Skyrim in your system, and you're satiated for a long while. There are other times you get a brand new handheld, your ROG ally, your Steam Deck, and you go, hmm, I wonder what Skyrim is like on this system. And because of that, I've started a new Skyrim playthrough every year. I thought I was gonna get out of 2023 without starting a new Skyrim playthrough, but I found a new reason to do so. A friend sent me the Novus mod pack and said, you gotta check this out. What do you think? And I couldn't believe what I was laying my eyes on. Skyrim with this mod pack is completely unrecognizable. And I'll be honest with you all, I don't do big overhaul mods in my games because as time has gone on and I've gotten more experience with modding and I go into the 50s and hundreds of my mods list, which I know many of you have me smoked in that number, it starts to have conflicting issues. Games are breaking, saves are breaking, files are lost, and I spend more time tinkering with save files than playing games and I just can't justify that. But Nexus has done an incredible job making it easier than ever to take these massive mod packs on PC and installing them naturally into your game, handling all the file navigation, all the compatibility, where you can just, through a click of a couple of buttons, overhaul your game. So everything you're seeing on screen took me a handful of button clicks through the Novus website using their installer, bada bing, bada boom, all you really need is file size. Sometimes you may have to go individually download a mod or delete something from your cache during the installation, but otherwise, if I can do it, trust me, you can do it. So I'm here to tell you about this mod pack and why, yes, even this year, it is worth playing Skyrim again. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here and you're into Bethesda news, information, conversation, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, what have you, you're in the right place, consider subscribing. I really want to begin with the combat. One of the main reasons I never went gung-ho with giant overhaul mods when it came to Fallout or Elder Scrolls is I think of it like a Christmas tree. Pardon me, as you can see behind me, kind of in the festive spirit. You take that tree home from that parking lot down the road and you put it in your house and it's the same old tree no matter what. You can hang a bunch of ornaments on it, but no matter what, same tree, right? So no matter how many vegetation mods and overgrown mods I throw into Skyrim that make it look absolutely beautiful, absolutely modern, it's still janky Skyrim combat that I know and love. Now we have a system that's overall the animations, the way AI operates, the way rules in combat go, the way the world is now dangerous. It's unbelievable. It's injected all this energy in me where I go, oh my God, I can't drop this now. This is incredible. So let me break it down for you. There's so many layers to it. There's even new skills you can unlock in a custom skills menu where you can get a pugless skill tree. So now hand to hand is extremely viable and in some cases broken. But for me, I wanted to toy around with the new animations for weapons I've already used. So I was using a great sword and cleaving through enemies with unbelievable strength, unlike in the original Skyrim combat where there was a lot of clipping with weapons and it didn't feel overall that great. When you combine that with a new gore mod that I'm talking, you can paint the walls with these fools, it is so satisfying. But more than anything, it's this new animation system. The way that you'll be able to dodge and do flips if you have a bow and arrow out. I was battling against this bandit chief. It was pouring rain outside the fortress and I'm dodge rolling out of the way in third person playing Skyrim. I, I was like, wait, this is, I can't believe this is Skyrim. And I've seen a couple of moments like that where people have spent hours and hours and hours, days and days and days with a mod list and got Skyrim to that level. But the fact that I took a couple of hours to let it install or do its thing fired up and I went, oh my God, this is Skyrim is unbelievable to me because it injects new life into all of these gameplay styles. From a visual spectacle, as you saw with some of the dodges that you can do with archery to the danger these foes present. They do a lot more damage, but so do you. There's a new stagger gauge mechanic. So if you weaken their stamina enough, you'll be able to take them down and do a ton of damage. There are natural gory attacks. So if I do a really heavy, strong attack on a weakened enemy, you'll actually see their intestines rip out and drag along the floor. Like it is a completely different game. It's truly, truly unbelievable. But it goes beyond that because 
what good is new combat if you can't engage in new things in the world? And that is another thing that's injected new life into me when playing this Nova's mod pack, because you'll not recognize the game, not just visually, but because I do the entire tutorial for Skyrim, right? Done it a million times. I exit the cave. I'm like, okay, I know where I am. I know, you know, we got Riverwood down here to the right. I know we got a mine up to our right as well. I know the bandit camps down to our left. I get beyond that initial set of locations. And all of a sudden I'm starting to get met with new NPCs, new quests, new caves, new everything where even new bandit camps are peppered about and there's new interactions with them all and they're dangerous. I've ran into bandit camps and they're level 26 and I'm level five and I'm like, oh snap, I gotta get out of here because you can't just overpower your way through things. But that set of new wrinkles with the brand new combat makes this world feel so unfamiliar and there's new ways to traverse it, which is perhaps the most mind blowing part. So part of this mod pack is a paraglider. And as you'll see here, you can dive off the top and you can glide over the map of Skyrim. Again, absolutely aghast that this is Skyrim. New ways to traverse, new ways to play. The game looks modern. I, I was like, this is, this is literally what we've dreamt of. I mean, it's that mixture of Elder Scrolls and Breath of the Wild and the dream of what ES6 could be all in one. But this paraglider is so fun because now you don't have to janky drop your way down mountaintops. You can just fly off to your next destination. It changes how you tackle the world. And why that is so wholeheartedly intriguing is because a lot of what Skyrim does right is it's moment to moment exploration. Seeing something far in the distance and being able to glide your way there is what it's all about. And sometimes getting the drop on an enemy flying into their camp and taking them out, it's an incredible feeling. Now, visually, this game, as you've already seen, looks really good. Pretty close to modern, thanks to the EMB mods that are installed here that change completely from the vegetation to the textures to every city in the game looking completely spotless. But you've also probably noticed, as it's pretty difficult to edit around, that even with my PC, which has a 3080 i9, you know, it's an insane mega PC given how much work I do on it. And yeah, my performance was bogging down quite a bit. When you're inside an interior space like a cave, oh, silky smooth. I would warn those of you who are going to take the dive into installing this mod pack about which EMB you install and how you tweak your graphics just because even for a powerful PC that I went, okay, well, for the sake of experimentation and learning, let me just try the brute force method. It works and it works fine, but there were moments I was like jogging through Riverwood and it was really bogging down. Like it was really chugging and it's hard to showcase how great this mod is if you're dropping down to like 30, 20 FPS in certain instances as the game picks back up because so much is happening in this world and it's worth it, I promise you, but it is something you should be on the watch for. But otherwise, characters have been overhauled. I got close to Whiterun and I bumped into Aella the Huntress and I went, wait, I, I don't recognize her at all. And it adds to that feeling, that mystique of rediscovering Skyrim all over again. And that got me so excited to go to the Companions Guild and learn more about all these characters once more. And the stories within them are the same, but when it's mixed together with fully voiced mods, it's incredible. They've even taken some of the anniversary edition content and done voice work over that which I think is a great addition because one of my complaints with Anniversary Edition when it came out is that you can feel the divide. Like you can feel what's main content, what's DLC, and what's Creation Club over here in this corner where quests were not voiced. It was awkward feeling and especially for a new player stepping in, it's like, well, this doesn't really feel right. Like who made this? And, and now with the mods adding voice work to it, like even to the letters you read, it's beautiful. There are also random towns you can find that you can invest in and buy. Uh, it's again, incredible how much is packed in here. And it also goes down to simpler things. They have eye equips, so the UI has been completely changed where it's to me a bit of a hybrid between Oblivion and Skyrim, 
where you see your character. It also reminds me a bit of Elder Scrolls Online. You see your character and you have this whole menu on the left with a lot more statistics laid out. The UI is a lot more digestible and so you can equip whatever you want whenever you want. There's also little changes like a great one from Fallout 4 in that when you look at something, the inventory menu pops up right then and there. You don't have to pause the game by looting enemies. So that's another fantastic change. And especially how great it works when you're in third person. I preferred playing this in third person because of how magnificent the graphics now are, how great the animations are, the fact that I can dodge out of the way of things. I wanna see and feel all of that, right? So yeah, like when you're wandering in third person and looking at a dead body or looking at a crate or something like that, it's like the cursor magnetizes toward the nearest lootable object and kind of just works for you where it's, weirdly way better than any sort of natural loot system Bethesda has personally done. And so, like I said, I found myself playing in third person because I know these games are built for third person mostly. They consider third person, but I feel they're mostly built for first person. At least they play the best that way, even though I like to wander in third person. But now I'm wandering and playing Skyrim in third person. And it's just because of the tremendous work of all of these mods coming together and adding a whole new experience here. Not only that, but there's brand new weapons that you can discover from these new boss fights, these new quests that have been added. They have their own unique special effects. I had this ardent blade, which was a giant two-handed sword that really was cleaving through some of the early game enemies. But you know, I just can't get over one thing with this game. And I apologize if I sound like a broken record. It really is how unrecognizable the game is. You'll get to a place like Whiterun and you'll see like, okay, this is Whiterun. It's nice and cozy. I love how Whiterun looks. But I got to Markarth at one point and the approach to Markarth, I was like, dude, I play this game a lot. I don't recognize where I'm at at all. You get inside Markarth and you know where you're at. But leading into there, I don't know if it's because it was pouring rain, but leading into there, I had no clue where I was at. There is that sense of wandering blindly. And there are mods that have the waypoints at the top map bar. This is where things can get a little bit complex because there are times where my mod packs were all good to go, but then certain things just weren't working like they should have. Sometimes my dodge wasn't working. Sometimes that map bar was disappearing. And then you're really wandering in a dark room with the lights off. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's pretty intimidating because you just have no sense of direction. Uh, it does bring a lot of attention though to how good Skyrim is with environmental details to help you find a path and get to where you wanna go. But tracking quests and whatnot, that can be a little bit more difficult. Speaking of which, when you are questing and fast traveling, the map looks different now. The map looks different. Look at this. It's like out of Kingdom Come Deliverance. I, I can't believe it. Again, completely an unrecognizable video game from top to bottom. It's like it's got the bones of Skyrim, but a whole new human being on top of that skeleton. It's unbelievable. So hopefully I've conveyed to you why this Novus mod pack is absolutely worth your time. Simply put, it's because finally I feel the gameplay has changed enough where it's worth your time and attention to figure installing a giant mod pack out. But not only that, if you have the memory space and you have a Nexus account, that's premium because you need those download speeds, this is the easiest overhaul you can really install. It's impressive to me how far we've come where it used to be download this file here, drag it to the data folder and just keep doing that 30, 40, 50, 60 times and then Suddenly your game broke and you have no idea why. Now it's much easier to figure out. I mean, even going through the installer, they'll have green checks on what's working, X's where it's not working, and, and it's really easy to figure out. Again, I gotta give you my words of encouragement simply because I'm not good at this stuff. If I can do it, you can too. So ladies and gentlemen, are you playing Skyrim? Have you messed around with this mod? Has this been as big of a game changer for you as it has been for me? Let me know down below. I'm really excited to get your thoughts. And with that, take excellent care of yourselves and I will see you next time around. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the heck out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.